Very interesting. Is it? Is it interesting? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 craziest stunts from last week tonight. Clearly, this is the greatest object that has ever been invented. So I am emptying this bucket, and let us see how big we can go on this thing. Do you want the regular Bundo book or the better Bundo book? It's at betterbundobook.com. Well, we haven't actually heard from Bob Murray yet, but I'm sure he loved it. For this list, we'll be looking at some of the more extravagant gags executed by John Oliver and his team over at Last Week Tonight. Let us know your favourite stunts in the comments below. Number 10. Make Donald Trump again. It's a far understatement to say that Donald Trump's antics have been the butt of a joke or two. That's objectively funny. However, in this case, John Oliver decided to take a jab at Donald's actual name. Back when Trump was just a candidate for the Republican nomination, Oliver did a piece on Trump's campaign and noted that the family name was originally Drumpf. And Drumpf is much less magical. It's the sound produced when a morbidly obese pigeon flies into the window of a foreclosed old navy. Drumpf! This led to a Make a Donald Drumpf Again website, red MAGA style hats, and even a web browser extension that changed any web text containing Donald's name to the Drumpf version. And you can also buy these Make a Donald Drumpf Again hats, which we are selling at cost meaning we've chosen not to make a profit, a fact which will probably irritate Mr. Drumpf more than anything else I've said tonight. It was a simple and brilliant way to poke fun at someone who would become an easy target over the next few years. Mr. Drumpf, I await your lawsuit in the morning. I have no doubt the complaint will be signed in gold sharpie. Good night. Number nine, Chi John. After a long flight, Chi John arrived in Tokyo. He'd never seen anything like it, because he just got glasses the day before. It all started when Last Week Tonight ran a story about how the Japanese town of Tsutsaki had disavowed a mascot known as Chitan. Chitan had been shown as a friend to their own city mascot, Shinjo-kun, but cut ties after receiving complaints about Chitan's unconventional YouTube videos. Now, Susaki reportedly received over 100 calls from around Japan complaining about Chitan's behaviour, and earlier this year, the city attempted to distance themselves from it by declining to renew the real Chitan as its tourism ambassador. Basically, the city cut ties with the real otter because of the things the fake otter did. In response to Shinjo-kun's loneliness, Oliver sent over his own mascot, dubbed Chijon. A story of friendship between the two mascots ensued and was shown in Oliver's segment and in a follow-up bit later. Emboldened by his two drinks, Chi John tried comedy himself. Chi John killed. Local fish really do be like that. Unlike some of the gags on this list, this one has the feels all over it. No one else would have ever thought to help a lonely mascot feel a little less by themselves. He John had been trying to see Susaki. In the end, it was Susaki who saw him. It was a good surprise. He John hadn't realized surprises could be good anymore. For the first time in a long time, He John dared to hope. Number eight, Salmon Cannon. The segment starts off with a discussion of how salmon swim upstream to spawn, but hydroelectric dams have made this harder. Enter the Salmon Cannon. It's a machine that literally shoots salmon over the dam. You know, sometimes, sometimes people say the news has lost its touch, but every now and then, they f***ing nail it. Oliver builds his own and starts dropping the salmon in it, but it was who they hit that made this memorable. The US has been bombing pretty... Okay, okay. So we know it works. We know it works. Let's try firing two fish somewhere else. David Letterman, Jimmy Fallon, Homer Simpson, and Tom Hanks were just some of the people who found themselves blasted by a salmon. Not only is the whole thing ridiculous to begin with, but how we managed to get so many popular people to agree to be hit in the face by a fish is an accomplishment hard to beat. Because I have to... I'm glad they didn't ask us to come down. Number seven, Russell Crowe's jockstrap. To celebrate his divorce from then-wife Danielle Spencer, actor Russell Crowe auctioned off a ton of memorabilia from films he had been in. One such item was a jock strap used in the 2005 movie Cinderella Man. The bad news is we didn't do it. 
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it wasn't us. We didn't buy it. We did, though. Acquired by the show, along with others from the same auction, Last Week Tonight sent all of it to a lonely Alaskan blockbuster video store located in Anchorage. And I really hope the internet is good enough up there for you to see this in time, because if we do not hear from you in the next two days, I know a transportation museum in Scranton, Pennsylvania, <laughs> that I am sure could make room for a new exhibit. Of all the things the show could have bought, snagging someone's jock strap, regardless of who it belonged to, has got to be one of the most obscure things the show has done. It's a perfect example of Oliver's unique comedy in action. Everybody asked me, did, did they watch it? I don't know. I hope they did. <laughs> well, I've got some bad news for you there because we didn't. We didn't watch it at all. Number six, largest marble cake. One of the trademarks of this show is its unrelenting willingness to poke the bear. When they uncover unflattering tidbits about a political leader, they aren't afraid to put that on full display for their viewers. Such was the case with Gerben Guli Berdi Muhammadov, the president of Turkmenistan. After discovering how obsessed he was with self-image, the show ran footage of him falling off a horse multiple times. And look, I I'm not going to show you that same video again. I mean, why would I? when I can instead show you a closer angle of the exact same incident. <laughs> Again, the horse is fine and, this is true, a hero. At the end of the show, they introduced a 600 square foot marble cake depicting the same accident. Behold! <laughs> this monstrous folly! Is it funny, but it once again underlines how absurd the show is willing to go in order to make a point. We did it, guys! We did it! We did it! Number five, Our Lady Perpetual Exemption. In August of 2015, John Oliver announced on his show that they had formed a new church by the name of Our Lady of Perpetual Exemption. And it was disturbingly easy. This came as part of a story on the predatory actions of televangelists and how the churches they work for are tax exempt. Created entirely as a gag, it further helped to drive home the point about how very little scrutiny is given to some of these so-called religious organizations. Do you profess your belief? <laughs> Do you profess your belief tonight, brothers and sisters? They dissolved the church several months later, but the name resurfaced in June of 2021 when they created a fake healthcare sharing ministry. And you know, I couldn't run an organisation as important as this ministry all by myself, so please welcome, live from Johnny Care headquarters in sunny Florida, the Felicity Huffman to my William H. Macy, my dear wife and business partner, Wanda Jo. Praise be to you, my Wanda. Praise be to you, Majan! It too showcased how a religious entity had no obligation to provide their contributors any real value for their donations. Number four, Danbury Sewage Treatment Plant. My heart pounded as I prepared to meet my destiny. Late night hosts often poke fun at a variety of people and places. Such was the case for last week tonight when they mocked at Danbury, Connecticut. When the city's mayor retaliated by offering to name their sewage treatment plan after host John Oliver, he quickly backtracked when people thought he was being serious. I mean, just calling it the John Oliver sewer plant would have comfortably been enough, but they went a step further and went with the John Oliver memorial sewer plant, which is completely appropriate because it does seem that I've just been murdered by the city of Danbury. And I love everything about this. But in true John Oliver style, he pushed back offering up money to charity if the city went ahead. I will donate $55,000 to charities in your area. 25,000 to this food bank, another 25,000 to fill all the requests as of this taping from Danbury school teachers on Donors Choose, and 5,000 to ALS Connecticut, apparently a cause close to the host of that Danbury Hattrix video. Sure enough, they did. And it included Oliver accepting the dedication in person. Yes! We did it! We did it! The entire ordeal is a prime example of how this show steers into its comedy versus backing off where so many others would. Number three, Venus Invention Spots. Well, thank you, Erica. Thanks so much for coming in today. We appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for making it so easy. This yeah, great. super easy. Yeah, super easy. You can even argue way too easy. The term sponsored content refers to a type of advertising that is far more coy than typical ads. The audience may simply think that what they are seeing is part of whatever video or article they are viewing. 
Last Week Tonight showed how simple it was to get sponsored content into news programming. With a fake product and an actress to pitch it, they managed to get three news stations to run stories about their adult-themed blanket. So this is full of cutting-edge technology, but it just looks like a blanket. Yeah, it does. And that's because it is. It is just a blanket. The beauty of this gag was how it showed the viewers that even their daily news can be manipulated to sell a product. Because the truth is, none of this was nearly difficult enough to get onto TV, and it wasn't even that expensive. That cost just $2,800. This one cost $2,650, and this one only cost $1,750. It was all shockingly affordable and sadly on some stations didn't even look that out of place. And that is not good. Number two, debt forgiveness. So what do you say? Are you ready to make television history? <laughs> Let's do this. Did you know there's actually an entire line of business involving the purchase of other people's debt? Unbeknownst to many, debt buyers can buy off large portions of outstanding financial obligations from other creditors in exchange for a cut of whatever they recover. So once, once a company has bought your debt, whether the information is accurate or not, they are going to try to collect on it. Last week, Tonight went ahead and formed a debt recovery company and purchased $15 million worth of money, owing for around $60,000. They then forgave all of it, citing it as the largest one-time giveaway in television show history. It was a moment that surprised viewers and showed audiences that even big-time HBO shows can have a heart. It's done! It is done! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Dr Oz. Lying without lying is still lying. Everyone likes puppies, don't they? Here's a puppy right now. Here's a puppy. Hello, puppy. Hello, puppy. And look, look, neither I nor the puppy are making unsubstantiated claims about potentially harmful dietary supplements. You're not doing that, are you, puppy? Look, because you don't need to, do you, precious? Sex Ed. Famous friends giving us the real deal. If you get a chance to have sex with this man, go for it. The best safe word is poop nanny. Marlon Bundo. Leave it to John Oliver to write a children's book taking shots at Mike Pence. It turns out, in a complete coincidence, we also wrote a book about Mike Pence's rabbit that has also been published. In fact, while his is out tomorrow, ours is released right now. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Bob Murray dance number. Murray, Murray, Murray. Hey, Bob. John Oliver did a piece about Bob Murray and his shady coal mining operations. In retaliation, Bob sued him and HBO for defamation. The case was dismissed, but Oliver wasn't done. In a follow-up episode about slap suits, lawsuits used as scare tactics, the show took Murray's lack of sense of humour to the nth degree, with a five-minute musical number. He was Cosby's drug supplier, Jeffrey Epstein's prison guard! <laughs> led into the streets of New York, culminating in Times Square, all while literally flipping Murray off and singing words his repulsed staff had once signed on the back of a bonus check. This was a shining example of how freedom of speech protects individuals from people like Murray, and no one better than Oliver to illustrate this. So eat Agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.